615, time now for business news. And we say good morning to Mike Eppel a day after uh, the inflation rate for September is released, Mike. Uh, and it was close to where, you know, experts were forecasting yesterday, that 6.8, 6.9 range, uh, but still not very much below August. No, and that's the biggest problem here. Good morning, Tammy. And the other issue is, yeah, we look at the headline rate, which is still, look, let's face it, 6.9% is still elevated, even though it was down for a third month in a row. The problem here um, that we all feel when we go to the grocery store is the fact that food prices are way up. And that was borne out in the statistics that showed grocery prices have jumped the most year to year since 1981, with uh, uh, grocery costs up by 11.4% from September a year ago. And, and, and that's a basket of items, right? It's, it's, it's you know, not necessarily including if, if you want to spend more and can afford to do so on higher priced groceries, those have gone up even more percentage wise. So the cost of just putting food on the table has gotten uh, very challenging, let's face it. And it is not expected to slow down anytime soon. The uh, other issue with all of this, of course, is what the Bank of Canada is going to do a week from yesterday, next Wednesday, uh, for mortgage or interest rates, borrowing costs, because the inflation rate is still way above where it needs to be, or they want it to be, which is around 2 to 3%. Um, they're going to raise rates by likely another 75 basis points. The market was in a frenzy yesterday in anticipation of that. We saw the bond yields where the banks set their mortgage rates. Bond yields jumped. I, I've actually it's never seen a yield go up in a single day as much as we did yesterday on the five-year bond. It was up 21 basis points. Doesn't sound like a lot, but that's a quarter percent, and it's now at the highest level interest rate in 15 years. And the market's pricing in a prime lending rate north of 6% now. So that, you know, that, that just adjusts. Variable rates, HELOCs, uh, five-year mortgage rates will be going up. Next time you open your bank statement, if you've got a mortgage, it's going to see some uh, much higher numbers. And that's going to continue, unfortunately. Wow. And all of this in such a condensed amount of time. And then... Well, that's right. It's been... It's been that's right. It, you know, we were not that far away from where we thought inflation, where they said inflation would be transitory. Live, never live that down. And now here we are, uh, less than a year later. Uh, we know we saw gas prices um, going down, but that's for gas in particular. When it mm -hmm. comes to diesel, not so much the case. And that, again, can trickle down to delivery and transportation costs. Well, that was another takeaway, actually, from the inflation data that they said, well, gas prices have moderated from where they were in the summertime. And that's kept the headline inflation rate down. The problem is it's not just gas, it's diesel prices, which I, I filled up yesterday, just uh, regular gas, and I noticed the price uh, for diesel at $2.30 a liter. That has not come down very much at all. And actually got some responses just uh, uh, from various people in the trucking industry yesterday on the, on the inflation rate. And they said, look, our cost to fill up the big rig is astronomically expensive. Well, where does that go? That comes back to the delivery process and the base price for food. Uh, so that, you know, and we're already seeing, hearing anecdotally that um, shipments are starting to slow down uh, from the trucking industry specifically, and that indicates a slowdown in retail spending for consumers. It's all kind of intertwined here, but uh, we should not dismiss certainly the transportation cost and effect of uh, rising energy prices. All right. All right, Mike, we're going to have to end it there. We're unfortunately out of time, but thank you so much. Right. Uh, we'll chat with you tomorrow. Thank you. All right.